everybody and uh, welcome to how the game Zurubang is working. So yeah, I've been working on this game for uh, since 2016, end of 2016 more or less, 2017 I really started um, doing this uh, card game on my own as a side project, as a hobby and I've played it probably <laughs> a thousand times until then. It's absolutely enjoyable i really love it to death and everybody who i've played it with and there are a lot already they also love it and say it. they really like it they want to play another round so that's a very good sign i only have the same thing um when i was playing chess so this is the tabletop simulator and i have imported all my cards as they are drawn uh, all of the pixel art is done by myself yeah i'm not an artist so please, no judging. I'm just expressing myself uh, through this a little bit. I, I like this one. This is the Windy Go. This was another version of the card game. I also had really ugly cards once. So this is the final version and I will just go for it. And it doesn't look fantastic, but it looks uh, good enough to, to be a game in my opinion. So uh, Zurubang is a game for two players and uh, it's it consists of 105 cards in total and uh, you are playing a manager of a team of five cards and you have to duel your opponent and when you win the duels against your opponent you gain points and the first one who gains 28 points in total which is by the way my lucky number no joke uh, wins the game so a game can last 15 20 minutes sometimes a bit more than half an hour or 40 minutes depending on how long you think in the duel so it's a bit like chess sometimes chess game can go in a couple of minutes uh, other times you think a lot about the chess and uh, the position and stuff like this so different times so 105 cards and what makes them a bit interesting i put those two aside so i already <laughs> prepared something what makes those cards interesting is that there are five different elements and as you can see they consist of five different colors and maybe you can already guess which elements each color is let's put it a bit like that yes so and this we put aside for now let's start with the uh, let's start with this one so this you might have guessed this is earth earth is green and uh, if you turn it around you see one of 21 earth cards each element has 21 cards in total which makes if you sum if you do the math correctly 105 cards and we have the flesh eating plant here the flesh eating plant uh, this is the image and you see the power of the card on the upper left corner it's three you see the element and on the upper right corner you see a little leaf kind of a leaf and that is what element is shown on the back of the card now you have to know that not all cards uh, have the back which is on the front as well so some cards have no element but we're coming to this later other cards even trick you uh, so that's a nice twist it's also a bit of a bluffing game and then you have the, the name of the flesh-eating plant on the bottom. And sometimes there are some add-ons. For example, here, this is a spirit card. This is the succubus. Very sexy. So the succubus has power six. It's a bit stronger than the flesh-eating plant. And it can fly. This is the left uh, upper right symbol. It's a flying unit and this comes in handy. It's one of the three abilities. It's uh, flying shooting and destroying are the abilities oh i don't have a destroying unit actually it doesn't matter yeah that's the succubus this one what is this it's air and we have the hill dwarf he's in the mountains he is strong and he has a little skill description on top of all of this so in his case if the hill dwarf wins his direct duel you gain one point token if the hill dwarf loses his duel he has to be discarded doesn't tell you anything yet, but it will later for sure. He's a proud guy, let's say it like this. And the last two, the two easiest ones. Obviously, this is water. And here we have the mighty blue dragon. Also a flying unit. 
And if the dragon encounters a card with the shooting ability, which we will see in a moment, the duel ends in a draw. And this is the orc archer. He can shoot, although he's a weak guy. Should go into the gym a bit more often for an orc, maybe. But yeah, you have to be a bit flexible to do some shooting, I guess. Now, what makes this game interesting is, first of all, your opponent sees the back of the cards at all times. So that means you kind of get an idea what kind of cards your opponent has. So if your opponent has a lot of water cards, um, it's, it's wise to not have too many fire cards because water beats fire. And this is what the main feature of the game. It's a circle. Uh, which which um, is the fighting system. So, like in rock, paper, scissors, rock uh, beats scissors, scissors beats paper, and paper beats rock. We have the same here, just with uh, the elements. That means earth always beats spirit, spirit always beats air, air always water, water always fire, and fire always earth. No matter what else, unless there is something in the description. But as far as I know, I've changed everything so it's always like this. Water will always beat air, uh, fire and so on. Now this also means that if, uh, for example, air fights against fire, nothing happens because there's no direct connection, right? It's not in the circle. Or earth against air, or spirit against water, or uh, earth against water. So what counts here, whoever uh, wins, is the one with the higher power. Now, if the flesh-eating plant would duel the hill dwarf. Uh, we can see very quickly the hill dwarf is winning the duel because he has power five. Now, about the abilities. Now, uh, the orc archer has power three and the shooting ability. So if he would fight against the succubus, he wouldn't lose because he can shoot. And shooting units always win against the flying units. All right? So the Orc Archer wins against the Spirit card in this case. But of course, although he can shoot, he won't win against the Blue Dragon because the Blue Dragon is a water card. And the element who is stronger can fly, shoot or destroy, which is uh, this ability, by the way. He has two abilities, the Manticore. But we will see this in a duel a bit later. So if you have the destroying ability, uh, the shooting, the flying, it doesn't matter. The element, the stronger element always wins. Now, having that said, here we have another earth card, but it's not an earth card. Look at that. It says it's a non-elemental card. This is the adamantium golem. Strong guy, power nine. And uh, since he has no element, it's a very tricky card. So if it's on the battlefield and you would go, oh, fire always wins against earth. I will just go here and try to win against this one. Oh, he has no element. He will win. He has power nine because only the strength and the power of the card matters in this case. So the more or the higher the power of a non-elemental card, the better it is for them. And then finally, we have five cards of each element, which are the Zuru Bang. He is kind of the, the guy who gave this card game the name. He is, um, I would say some kind of God or higher uh, deity or something like over the top, ultra super cool. And uh, he has unlimited power. <laughs> as the symbol shows, and he is a non-elemental card. And in this case, as you can see on the upper right side, he has this cloud symbol, which points out it's an air card on the back, right? He has the uh, leaf, that's an earth card. Now there are five different sewer banks. Uh, each each sewer bank has, uh, is the, has the exact same powers in all of this, but all of them have a different uh, card back. So for the Zuru bank, uh, he wins against any card because he's so strong uh, he cannot be destroyed either but he will lose against any card which has power three or less so he will lose against the flesh-eating plant and the orc archer which comes in very handy <laughs> he's he he likes the balance so he wants to have the balance in the game and he also wants to have the 
weaker units uh, have the chance to win against him. And that's, this is what would happen. And they would uh, gain extra points and he would also have to be discarded. All right, so that's uh, the basics of the game, how it's working. And I will show you now how a game would start. And we will do, just do this random right from the spot because this is how I'm explaining the duel. So here would be my opponent. Let's do it like this. And these are the cards. I will mix them. And then I will deal five cards to my opponent from the top. So two water cards and air, two air cards and a spirit card. And I myself would get fire, earth, air, fire and spirit. Now, who starts? Who begins? The person who has the most cards of the last card which is left here. That's a spirit card. Unfortunately, my opponent and myself, we both have a spirit card. So now the one with the higher power will start. Okay, that's a zombie. Zombie has three. I hope I have more. Yeah, that's the succubus again. Funny. So I have power six. I have to say it out loud. And my opponent has only power three. If he wouldn't have a spirit card, he would have an earth card or a fire card or another air card or a water card instead. I would just start the duel. And if it's two spirit cards, uh, the higher power of them counted together. And if my opponent would only have water cards, if I would only have air cards, and there's a spirit card, the next card, the next card, and so on, will be chosen until finally a card comes, which one of us has more of them, or the higher power. I've never had it uh, in, in the thousands of games I've played that we had this similar uh, result. Uh, now we had one time we had the similar result, yes. So in this case, we, we chose just another color or another card and whoever has the most of the cards or the higher power starts. But normally it's very straightforward. It just goes, this is the one who starts with the more cards of the spirit in this case. So I will split this into three quarters. No, it's not quarters, two, three parts. And I will put them here kind of equally so this would be in the physical version and here's the graveyard so this will come in handy later now for uh so everybody explains it we play one open hand i will turn the cards around and i will start so let's take a look at my hand i have the gladiator which has a uh, power seven that's good because the powers rank from power 1 to power 11 the most. Of course, there's Zurabang, which even, even has more power. And he has the shooting ability, and this is very good. Shooting is always good. Even if you're a weak unit, shooting is a good ability. So power 7 shooting, very nice. This is also a pretty good card. Draw a card, uh, the druid. Draw a card from one stack, one of those stacks. In the duel, if the drawn card is an earth card on the front side, add plus four power to the druid, discard the drawn card after the duel. So, in many cases, the druid would get plus four buff bonus, and then he has power 10. Power 10 is very powerful. Unfortunately, there is no earth card here, so I have to evaluate. At the moment, he's not that powerful, but maybe somebody takes a, power, a card away or something. Here, I have a destroying unit. So now, then I have the Highlander. Highlander cannot be destroyed, just like in the movie. <laughs> if, the opposite of, if the opposite card has the destroying ability, gain plus one point token. So now let's talk about the destroying ability. And we will see this in the duel very soon, because I will ask my opponent for a duel in a moment. And then I will come to the destroying ability. The Manticore has the destroying ability. So the duel will just normally happen. I either win or I lose, but after the duel is done, my opponent has to put his card on the graveyard and take a new one and put it face side down here. I destroyed the card. Now this is very nice and powerful if the opponent card is very strong. For example, I can see he has the Sapphire Golem. Power 9, no element, very strong card. I hope I can get this card and destroy it. So in most of the cases he gets a weaker card. Yeah, that's the destroying ability. And he also can fly the Manticore. Of course, he has some wings. And then we go, the Succubus, we know already she can fly. So what does my opponent have? I cannot see. So what I see from my opponent is this. Boom. 
two water cards and I have two fire cards. Not very good for me. But I also have an air card, so I could counter one of his water cards. Then I also have an earth card, so I can counter one of his spirit cards. And I have a spirit card which can counter one of his air cards. So it is... It's interesting, it's difficult to say, but I think I, it's pretty equal. Maybe I even have a little advantage if I would duel him. The opponent has the Lizard Archer. There we go again. Shooting units, always good. The Sapphire Golden, we already took a look at. His strongest card, for sure. Then the Water Elemental. And it's interesting because uh, each element has one Elemental. And the Water Elemental gains plus one power for each Water card, which is face side up on the battlefield, including the opposite card, but not the water elemental itself. So, he, my opponent, will try to play this card before this card, so he gains plus one power from this water card. And luckily, I don't have any water card, so he won't get another buff from that. His maximum power will be power nine. But in the end, it doesn't matter that, that much anyway, because, well, the only card which has power nine in my case is the Manticore and Water always wins against Fire anyway, so yeah, it doesn't matter. And my opponent also has two very weak cards, the Zombie and the Xuxa. Both power three, Spirit and Air are the elements, so pff, I'm not worried about this. But anyway, I don't know it. So now what I will do is, I will just go for it. I think I have a good hand, especially because of the Gladiator, the Druid. And there's no card which has less than six power, so... And flying cards it's very good i have a good hand i have to say so i will duel my opponent i just throw the duel the glove the imaginary dish, dish, dish. I hit him with it now my opponent can decide if he accepts the duel or not if he says no i do not want to duel i will get immediately four points as a penalty as a punishment and whoever has 28 points first wins the game so this is nice little bonus but in the end if i would duel him and my opponent has a really bad hand i could get even more points than those four points at one point i still am not 100 percent sure i might change it to five points to make the penalty a little bit bigger for now it's four points but my opponent says hey let's duel i like that because of course i want to show you how a duel is going now let me remind you I have two other options. So one of it is the duel. The other would be, I'll take one of my cards, discard it, put it on the graveyard and take a new card from one of the stacks. I could actually, actually, you know what? I'm doing this for, to, to show you something. <laughs> I will put away my strong gladiator fire card because I see that there is a water card. Now, if I get this water card, I have a so-called rainbow hand. Water, earth, air, fire, and spirit. Five uh, different cards. And with the rainbow hand, it is uh, as uh, like this. If I offer a duel, and if I win the duel, I will get plus two extra points if I win the duel. And this is taking effect from the very start from the very beginning of the duel so this is what i've done Aha, funny and now i can show you another nice example this is actually not even a water card although it so shows on the upper right corner that's uh, the water card on the back it's a spirit card it's a tricky sneaky little specter one uh, there's one ghost in each of the sets he can fly and he is the opposite of the card which he means to be so. If I put my water card here, air is always winning against water. So my opponent plays this card, goes like, hey, I have air. And then I'm going like, what the hell? Look at that, I have spirit. So I win this duel. Yeah, very tricky. Awesome, now it's uh, my opponent's turn. So this is one thing I can do, exchange one card. So I think I'm pretty happy with this exchange. It was a good, good swap. Now my opponent has to think, so what will he do? You know what? He says, rainbow hand, and I have those weak cards and he will duel me very soon. I will check uh, the, the next uh, possibility. I will discard all five cards boop, and get five 
new cards. Maybe I have the chance to get a rainbow hand too. No, denied. Okay. Nonetheless, I have five new cards and so now I have to readjust what I will do, but I still will go for a duel because if you take five new cards, normally they shouldn't be that good either, but oh, they are really good. <laughs> in win. Shooting, power six. This is one of the strongest cards in the game. He not only has shooting, he not only is elementless, he also has the destroying ability. Evil Star Dreamer. There's the Orc Archer again with the shooting ability too. That's not good against our flying. Gee. The Baphomet with power eight and flying. So he would also beat my Succubus because they're both flying and he has no higher power. And we now have another trick card. As you can see on the upper right corner, this is actually a spirit card. Pop, pop. So it's a double trick. Look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Anyway, it's my turn now, so I will do with my opponent and my do uh, my opponent says, yeah, I accept. Now the opponent can choose if, uh, if uh, they want to start or if they want me to start. So from a pure logical sense, in which every player makes the same mistake, they say like, you start. But it's a little disadvantage. The one who starts is actually the one with a little advantage because the last two cards are played with uh, with knowing what the opponent has already put on the battlefield. So my opponent says, yes, I, uh, I accept the duel. So the duel token stays with him. So we know who got the duel and he will start. So what will he start with? He looks at my rainbow. It doesn't matter. He, I have every any element will beat the other. So he will start with the sneaky, tricky air card. But of course, it's not an air card it shoots at me. So I am falling for this and I will go for the succubus because yeah, you know, spirit always wins against air. We learned this already, but little do I know, of course I know now, but little do I know that it's not a real air card. Anyway, so now I'm thinking, okay, he doesn't have any more air cards, so he cannot harm any of my water cards, but I don't have a real water card. Anyway, I'll try to go for it. I will hope he will try. Uh, he will put the fire card there and he will also fall for it and put the fire card there. So we kind of trick each other. And now he wants me to fall for it one more time. And of course, I see that there is also an earth card here. So not only my druid gets more points, I also see the chance to get his spirit card. So we're fooling each other all the time. And here we are, so he started, and I have two cards left. So I put a card, he puts a card, he puts a card, I put a card, so I can also put both cards immediately here, of course. Now look at this. With one card, he will win against my air card with his uh, spirit card, but I can beat his earth card if he do so. So he has to think, will he really do it? I think I will save uh, the best for last, so I will put this one here and this one there. Now he has to think, so will he go for it? So there's one little trick, which you don't know yet. Uh, air cards, as their airborne element, have a lot of flying cards. So he will go for the trick and hope that I have a flying card and put his card here. And then the Baphomet will be the last card to put here. That's it. This is how a duel is going. And now we will see how this duel went by revealing all the cards starting from the start. Boom. Yeah, I fell for it. The Star Dreamer wins because the Star Dreamer can shoot and my spirit card is lost. So that means one, two points for the Star Dreamer. But since he has also the destroying ability, it happens what I told you before, I have to discard my card. I have to take a new one from one of the stacks and put it here. I won't take the earth card because I might need it for my druid with power plus four. Maybe this is a stronger card here. So I will go for, I will try to keep my rainbow hand uh, stable because maybe in the next round I can have it already. And it doesn't matter if I would have taken an fire card here. So I don't have a rainbow hand anymore, but 
I started the duel with a rainbow hand, so whatever happens, if I win this duel, I will get plus two points. So this card stays here, and nobody, especially not my opponent, knows what it is. I can take a look at it secretly, but uh, oh wow, look at that, it's the black dragon. That's a good swap at least. Okay, time to reveal the next one. I thought I'm confident <laughs> to win with the water card, but no, he actually has the fire card here. So, uh, what did he start? Yes, I put, oh yeah, he, what was I thinking? I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, wh why put, where did, what, what went wrong? Why did I put the fire card here? Because I was already knowing my own card, that's what happened. So normally you shouldn't put your fire card here if I put a water card here, right? That's absolutely stupid. So I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but he was super lucky because he has the shooting ability, I'm flying. Another two points for him. Okay, I, I should play it absolutely revealed. Maybe I give him five new cards and don't know what they are and just play them randomly. <laughs> okay here we go and there we go it's a fire card so I don't even need to take the card I will lose this one six points for him that's not good and here he thought he might shoot my flying card but I don't have a flying card I have the Highlander which cannot be destroyed and I have power seven six against seven and air doesn't correlate with earth so here I get two points back and the last revealed card is the Baphomet against the Manticore. I am stronger, power nine against power eight, and I can fly, so I will get those two points. And the Baphomet has to be discarded because I destroyed him. You will get this card. Okay, that was the duel. Time to count everything together. One, two, three, four, five, six and I only have four. That means my opponent won the duel. That also means I don't get anything because only the winner gets points. So here are the first, I don't have to do it like that. <laughs> here are the first six points. This is counted five points, the bigger token. This is one point. Six points for my duel. Good start for him, damn it. Okay, now this is the first round and we will gather all our cards together again put the tokens away and look at them again so i have a bit of a stronger hand now eventually and he has a bit of a weaker hand but now it's his turn because yeah the dual token was uh, on his side and uh, well he can decide if he duels me once again or he can decide if he does something new so yes let's let's do it Let's, uh, let's play one random round, just for the fun or the sake of it. I will give him five new cards. Oh, let's, get, let's go for a little bit of water here. <laughs> okay, boom. That's uh, what I have to face and I will duel him. And he says yes. And now he puts his card like this. So air wins against water. I'm, I'm confident I will do this. I have to save my fire card a little bit. Let's play the dragon here. Well, he will beat it with his Earth card, most probably. There's another Water card. Uh, maybe I can fly away. Oh, Yeah, yeah, that was really uh, uh, something in my mind which went wrong <laughs> earlier. But now it won't happen like this. Oh, I should actually, I will play this one to avoid also him hitting my... Oh, Fire card. Well, he will get my Manticore anyway. But maybe I can get his fire card like this. So let's see. Let's see how this uh, duel turns out. Oh, wow. The Basilisk. So the, the Basilisk is placed on the fifth position in a duel. Clear all opponent cards from the battlefield, which can be destroyed, including the Basilisk. So if this guy would have been played here, I would have to discard all my cards it's a game destroyer it's only one card like this I think it's funny it's always like a last resort or something which is just uh, yeah it's a, it's a nice twist I think but 
I have the Highlander. How lucky am I? Not only is air always winning against water, so first of all I won the duel, but I also gained plus one point token as it says in the description because I am played against the destroying ability card which gives me three points. Ain't that beautiful. Next one. Great. The Alpha Cat. The weak Alpha Cat wins against my Black Dragon. <laughs> Power four and flying, but we all know Earth always wins against Spirit. Well, thanks for nothing, Black Dragon. I really like his design. I'm happy I, how I made that. Oof. Oh, this is an interesting duel. So the Cyborg Rain is another super hardcore powerful unit with power 9 and shooting ability and i have my druid but finally i can draw a card if it is an earth card on the front side add plus two for uh, add plus four power to the druid so let's hope this isn't real earth card and it is it's the green energy knight which gets plus five power on his first position of a duel but that doesn't matter now we discard him put him on the graveyard and 10 is one more than 9. He has no element, so I get more points. The final matches, uh, duels. Oh, oh, interesting. So the... Oh, this is still the old card. I didn't exchange it. What a pity. But it doesn't matter. This is the Red Energy Knight, as it says in the description. It's a, it's a faulty card. So the Red Energy Knight... If it's played on the second position of the duel, which would be here where the Alpha Cat is, it would get plus 10 power. It's not on the second position, it only has power 5. Doesn't matter, it's still more than power 2, but the Spectre is flying, and flying can fly away from the higher power, so it's a draw. Looks very good for me, I already have 6 points. Only a crazy wonder would change the game. And another Energy Knight, the Blue Energy Knight, on the third position he would have gotten power 10 doesn't matter anyway because he is water i am fire so he will win the duel but i will also destroy him because that's what the manticore is doing he gets him the water card now in normal cases this would be a draw right i win he wins i win it's a draw and he wins but he only has one, two, three, four, five points, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six points because of this special ability from the Highlander. So I would have won the stool and gotten six points. All right? Cool. Now, let us pretend, let us pretend for the sake of it and to, to uh, tell you how it's working, it was a draw. So, as I said, both of us have uh, five points. That means it's a draw and we would go to Sudden Death. Sudden Death works like this. Each of us players chooses one card to play, which we play at the exact same moment. On the words of Zoo, Ru, Bang, and then we play the card. And the one who wins gets plus two extra points. So we had five points already, plus two points, that would be seven points. And the duel is over. Now, in the physical game, we would just take five of our tokens in the hand. There, where the dual token is, is the position number one. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. And then we would take as many tokens in one of our hands for example, if I wanted to play the dragon, I would take two tokens in my hands, hold it over the battlefield, just like my uh, opponent was do, and then at the same moment we say zoo, ru, bang, and reveal which card we have chosen to play. And maybe he would have played card number three, and then it would be another draw, and it would continue one more time. Now I have one little disadvantage this is a card which I don't know what it is. So my opponent, while we're having this, takes a look at this card and puts it back. Card position number five. So what should I go for? I would win against the Basilisk, a draw against the Alpha Cat. I would lose against the Cyborg. And uh, yeah, 
Well, he has power five because there is no second position in a sudden death mode. So he's just unlucky. And then there's this one, whatever it is. So the Highlander is a good card to, to think of. Uh, Black Dragon would actually win against almost every card except the Alpha Cat. And it would be a draw against the Cyborg because if the Dragon encounters a card with the shooting ability, the duel ends in a draw. I could play him, get plus four power again, but then he could play the, boom, uh, the Boomerang Fighter. Now I'm saying it myself, it's the Red Energy Knight. Ugh. The Red Energy Knight, That why didn't I destroy him? The Spirit loses against the Alpha Cat. And the Manticore would not only lose against the Basilisk, but also against this card probably, because it might be a water card. So I would go for the Highlander. Take one token in my hand. And he is very likely going for the Cyborg, because yeah, the Cyborg wins against any card except him. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. I think he would go for the Cyborg. I think that was a bad decision eventually. Maybe I should have taken him, but then he would have gone for the Red Energy Knight. I think this would have been a better option, the Druid. Let's do it. I will take the Druid. And he will take the Cyborg. So we both take the card on the position number three. And then we say, Zoo, Ru, Bang! And he reveals, and I reveal. And then I have to take one card from the... Uh, has to be an Earth card from the front side. Yes! Ooh, it's the Green Dragon. Well, now I won the duel and I would get seven points because, yeah, five points have been played already. Hey, let go. So it would take five plus two. And this keeps on until one of us has 28 points. That's the game. So I can just tell you the most fun of this game is um, the unpredictable things and trying to oh by the way this was this card the mighty krabaka power one shooting um, trying to yeah get your opponent to play a card against the card which is not the card it shows to be trying to remember the cards if the opponent has some good cards and then you can try okay if i play this but then he can play this one so it is it's a lot of it's a lot of strategy it's a lot of tactics especially tactics more than strategy for sure because you can have a you can have a certain strategy in the very beginning of the game there's a lot of different strategies which you can choose from so i'm playing against uh, the the world best zurubank player very often chris is his name and his his strategy is very often pure luck so he's exchanging all his cards all the time and takes five new ones until he has a really good hand and then he's just playing it. So it's uh, very risky. So in the moment, in the moment when I'm playing with him, which we do all the time on the tabletop simulator, I, I win more often. I think you can confirm that. Because yeah, I'm I'm just trying to gather some really good cards to, to beat him and, and memorize the cards if he keeps them safe. And then the bluffing part is just so much fun when you have those cards and don't know which card they are and you have to think and reconsider and and then there's so many unexpected things and the beautiful stuff happening so it's it's always almost every time we're playing i'm having a huge laughter and like yes or like huge happiness feeling or the complete bitterness i can't i'm totally destroyed i can't believe that happened or why didn't i play this card or something like that so um Whoever wants to play this card against me, a uh, card game against me, please write something in the comments uh, that you want to play and then we can do it. We can duel and I will teach you and we can use the Discord chat to talk with each other and I will invite you to play a game round with me. So there's a couple of things which uh, haven't been covered yet. There are some cards which are a bit special. And on top of that, I, I was talking, oh, you're, you're, you know what I was doing? I gave myself seven points, right? But I forgot completely that I had a rainbow hat. So I don't even have seven points. I have nine points plus two. So 
let's not forget about that. Now, talking about the rainbow hand, if for which is happening much, uh, much less often, if uh, I can get five of a kind of any element, for example, five air cards. Now, the nice part about it is that I would, if I would win the duel, I could get plus four points. So even plus two more points in this case. And, and this is the part where it gets fun. I would not only win against every water card, if it's a water card, I would also win against my uh, card, which I would be weaker against, against every spirit card. So if I have five of a kind air, I win against all water cards, all spirit cards. So it also wins against the weaker one. If I would have five of a kind of, uh, let's let's show it right now. I'm just throwing them away. If I would have five of a kind earth, oops, and I start a duel, it doesn't matter if I would lose some cards because they, he would destroy them. I would not only win against all the spirit cards, which I do anyway, but also against his fire cards. So this Alpha Cat would, out of the extraordinary, win against the Manticore and then be destroyed. <laughs> but I would take a new Earth card. So, did I forget something? Oh, look, I didn't throw them away. I just gave them into his hand, <laughs> which I cannot see. I can try to check them around. Tabletop Simulator, so cool. Such a cool tool that this is even possible, especially in the times now, in the quarantine times. So I'm playing this game a lot in this beautiful background of Venice. Are there some things which I have forgotten? No, I think I, I think that's it. I think that's more or less how the game is working. Yeah, that's it. And uh, if you have any questions uh, about the game, please feel free to write it in the comments. Please tell people who would like something like this about this game. And uh, thank you very much for listening and I hope you stay safe. And we will keep on with the next video, which will quickly describe how those rules will take effect in the Zurubang World League. Bye bye.